So, something I find interesting is the fact that everything's still my fault. So, I don't know what twisted fucking world it is where when somebody tells you they're depressed and they're slipping further down the fucking hole and all the information they've gotten and on top of that you're ignoring them for 26 hours so for 6 hours she didn't know if I was alive or dead because her mom and she admitted this her mom was the one shutting off her phone and not letting her have it. So, the fact that Jake Longboard, or Jacob, likes to sit there and run his fucking mouth, I don't really care, because he's never had the balls to run his stupid ass little mouth in front of me. In fact, his Sasquatch having ass was so scared he had to shut the door in my face while I had his dog on a leash. Woo, mosquitoes. So, she blew up my TikTok after creating a fake account Because all the agreements, you know, my Google, everything, my Microsoft, my TikTok, everything that we had joint. Uh Uh-uh. If I'm going to tell you I'm depressed and I'm spinning and I'm spiraling and you're going to let your mom talk shit, okay. And then what do you do? You tell me, oh, I could go get my stuff, but your neighbors will probably shoot me. Actually, you didn't even say probably. You said they will. I have the text. So you're telling me to come get my stuff, and then you're telling me that there are people that are going to shoot me because of whatever you told them. Which is interesting because I left the house of my own accord without a police escort or anything. Because what? Oh yeah, all you had to do was say so. But you wanted to drag it out and make it this big thing. Your mom wanted to drag it out because I admitted to her I was spiraling in my depression, which was obviously a mistake because when you tell somebody that you're spiraling in in depression, Um, they just make it worse. And then they blame you. And then they block you. And then you're left sitting on the street wondering, well, what do I do now? I've spent an entire year working under her name so that way her paychecks didn't decline. So that way she'd be able to actually visit with her kid and not worry about having to clock in for work. You know the person that had a problem with that? Baby daddy. You know why? Because he didn't like the fact that I was waiting in the garage for them to walk past and shut the door and then I would get in the car and then go and clock in. So that way there would be no issues. So he didn't like the fact that every single obstacle he threw at us, we overcame. But that's okay because Sandy Sams has continually showed that she never once cared. She continually shows that she's done nothing for this last year but use me, allow other people to abuse me, and then blame me for it. It's my fault that her parents did this. It's my fault that Jake is doing this to her. 
I ruined her entire life in one year. And she's saying all of this whilst calling, uh, who is it, the crisis line, telling them that I'm suicidal. So she's actively stoking the fire while calling law enforcement saying that I'm threatening to kill myself. So, I have a feeling we're all gonna like to see what happens when I do go over there. Because not once throughout this entire year has she been given any reason to fear me. Yet she acts like I've been cheating on her and I've been abusing her this whole time. Like I've been lying to her nonstop. She's literally treating me the way she should be treating her baby daddy. Which I guess is only fair because before when I had my other TikTok, before her parents had me take it down, right before they started all the abuse, and the misleading of the court, and everything else. So, I'm honestly done. Because I have to sit here and sleep on the streets while, guess what? She's coming back from Bend, Oregon, the dunes. One hell of a psychiatric hospital, if you ask me. Considering I almost checked myself in. Why? Obviously, there's something wrong with me if I tell my fiancé I'm spiraling. And she tells me to leave. And she's not even home. She doesn't plan to be home for the next week. I know I shouldn't be all caught up on the relationship, and I'm not. I can accept the fact that she used me and threw me away when she was done. I can accept that. What I can't accept is somebody continually telling me how good of a person I am over and over and over again until I start to believe them. And then they tell me I'm the reason they've been miserable for the last year. While I'm offering to leave. Where I'm asking, hey, we can still be friends, just let me know. If you want me to leave, I will leave so that way you can have your daughter here. I even threatened her parents that I would sleep in a bush specifically to work and pay her so that way she could fight this entire court case, if that's what it took. But that's what happens when you tell a loved one you're spiraling and you're thinking of suicide because guess what? Everything is crashing down. And she wants to pass it off. Oh, well, of course you have mouth problems. We've been trying to figure out why my ass has been bleeding for two years. We've been trying to figure out why I've been dropping random stuff. Why I've been twitching more. But hey, if I have cancer, then I guess it's my own fault. Which it is, I mean, I'm not going to say it isn't. I'm the one that chews and smokes at the same time. For the last ten years. But, finding out that information, and having nobody to turn to, 
finding out that the only person you can turn to doesn't even want to talk to you. Like you did something wrong. So on top of finding out that you might have cancer, you find out that in the four days that your girlfriend's gone and you've been cleaning and fixing up the house, you fucked up. It pisses me off because all year I've been sitting here complaining about the fact that, you know what, I haven't had a mailing address in 12 years. I'm still wearing some of the underwear that I bought freshman year in high school. I'm 31. So, when somebody's sitting here telling me I denied all the help they gave me, she admitted that she didn't want me to work because she was scared I would leave her. She admitted the fact that it was her decision to try and work every day sporadically between 2 and 4 so that way we could clock in at 5. But it's my fault that I decided to go into residential construction, building houses, from nothing. For 8 hours just so that way I could come home, take a shower, and clock into her DoorDash to help her with work. And then come home after that, cook food, clean it up, and then go to bed. So, when somebody says that them sitting on the couch every day Till about an hour before we have to clock in naked, not wanting to move or do anything or watch anything or go anywhere or do anything is helping. I don't know what you're talking about then. Because I was sitting there asking to go for a walk, asking to go out to the park and go for walks, get outside and do stuff. And she was too depressed all week, every week, every day, all day. So I guess being with me is that horrible. I guess I am that horrible of a person that you can't even... That I can't even exist in your vicinity without completely ruining your life. And I wonder how I keep spiraling. I wonder why I've ruined four people's lives, I'm pretty sure, that work at the crisis clinic. Because in the last six relationships, guess who's the one that gets to leave with absolutely nothing? Because... What man would kick out a woman? What man would kick out a pregnant woman? Not to mention most of my relationships require me to leave all of my friendships. So when it comes down to me needing some help, I don't have anyone. I don't even have anywhere to turn to. So while she's eating s'mores and having mixed drinks and riding quads, this this is my sleeping bag. This is all I have. That's it. I don't have anything else. All my money went towards her. Yet again. By doing my patriarchal friggin' job, I don't have anything. <laughs> I was left with $14 in our joint account. Why? Because 
my money was the only money that was being put in there. That and a $4 tip here and a $5 tip there while doing DoorDash. But I guess that's what you do to somebody that ruins your entire life. So when people ask if I'm suicidal, that depends. It really does. What am I doing right now? I have a friend who is having some problems. And even though I want to jump off of every bridge I cross, even though I, I want to fucking end my life every day, I ran into one person that needed someone to talk to today. And I helped them. And then I got a message saying that a friend needed some help. Well, the buses don't run. Well, I got one bus to catch. That'll get me there. And then I'm screwed for the rest of the night. You're looking at where I'm going to be sleeping. It's great. The other night I was at a optometrist. But I mean, what is what is anyone supposed to do? What's anyone supposed to feel? Because I was perfectly content with leaving the state last year. Heading south, making my way freaking anywhere else. And instead, I put all of that into a relationship. So, 